Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks to those of you who joined us early. Um, if you're just joining, please feel free to share um, your name and where you're calling from and what your organization does in the chat. Um, we've had some great uh, contributions from all sorts of people all over uh, the UK. I think we may have some international visitors as well. So people representing um, uh, Lord's Taverners, uh, in Pello in, in Wales, um, in Hull, uh, our friends from Open Age, uh, lots of different people from all around the country, which is brilliant. So um, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, we, my name's Lynn Wilson, uh, I'm from the Upshot team. And I'll be sh uh, sharing the screen with us today will be my colleague, uh, Noah McGurr, who has worked at Upshot for several years, supporting, among others, the FA, Support England, the Association of Colleges, and also some of our international clients as well. Um, Noam will be joining us from his home in North London, and he'll be taking us through today two of the Upshot reporting tools, so the people report and the attendance report. Um, please do feel free to add your questions to the chat. Um, we found that this is the best way of managing these uh, webinars. We only have a short time, so 30 minutes seems to be agreed to be a very good uh, length of time for these. Um, and we, I'm sure we've all been on Zoom calls recently where things get uh, taken off the and uh, uh, questions which are only relevant to maybe two or three people. So we found that using the, the chat is a really good way to manage this, so hopefully that's okay. But please feel reassured, if we don't come back to you on the chat, we will, we do have a record of it, we'll be following up um, straight after the call and getting in touch with you to, to, um, to sort out any queries you have. Um, as I always say at this point, um, we will be sharing with you today um, uh, reporting and some ideas about how that reporting can be done with Upshot. Um, all our organizations use Upshot in many different ways. So it's really important to, um, to think about um, talking with the team, your managers, um, your funders even, about uh, whether these things are actually applicable to uh, you as an organization um, before you sort of implement those. Having said that, reporting is actually something that you can have a go at. Um, you can't necessarily break anything. So I think it's a, it's a good one to, to have a look at if, whether you're experienced at doing it or, or whether you're new to reporting. Um, as I've mentioned to a few people, the session will be recorded this morning. So you'll be able to share that with your colleagues. And we always post those up on our website as well. So, and we share the link uh, with you. Um, and uh, yeah, just to reassure you, so Noam is showing us the, uh, the Upshot page at the moment. Um, the support tab um, is operational as, as ever. We've gone right through this uh, difficult time, uh, doing lots and lots of support, lots of training, um, and lots of engagement with our um, Upshot uh, user community, which, is, which has been brilliant for, for all of us. Um, so yeah, we're here to help um, at any time. So I think uh, we have now, yeah, oh, there are lots of people in the room, so that's brilliant. So feel free to, to add questions in the chat. And uh, without further ado, I will hand over to my colleague, Noam, to guide us through these two reports, which will enable us to turn data into insight. Thanks, Lynn, yes. and, and thanks everyone for, for joining today. Um, today, I'm going to take you through the people in attendance reports. Um, these are two powerful reports that offer a number of ways to analyze your data, communicate with your users, um, but also complete different actions in, in bulk. Um, on a personal level, I have to say it's great to see so many people uh, joining us today. Some of the organizations that joined have been using Upshot for months, uh, uh, others for, for years, um, collecting different registration forms, attendance records, timeline events, and our objective today is to introduce some tools uh, to you guys that will hopefully provide you with, uh, with value um, by using your uh, data better to uh, manage, understand, and analyze your delivery, but also your audience, the, the people that the organization is working with. As Lynn mentioned, uh, we highly encourage you to um, go to your accounts after the session, run the different reports, and I can reassure you by running reports, there's no risk of deleting any data. Um, so I would highly uh, recommend, recommend that. Before I go into the people reports, I just wanted to um, direct you on the home screen that I'm showing you now. Uh, there is the missing attendee data section. Um, this section, 
shows you the number of profiles that you have on your account. So on this demo account, I have 212 profiles. It also shows me how complete my data is. In this case, in terms of collecting postcodes, collecting date of birth, but also emergency contact details. And the reason I've, I've started with this section is because the people report allows you to query this set of data. So all your profiles and run loads of different reports uh, for your benefit. To access the people report, uh, you can either go to the people tab and click report or from the reports tab. It doesn't matter which one you, you prefer. And um, the, the people report, just for, for you to know, um, is our most powerful reporting tool. Um, that's one of the insights we did from, from our monitoring. It's basically a junction where different streams of data meet. Uh, so it's where attendee demographic and general data can meet with attendance data, but also timeline events. Um, and it's that combination that makes it such a powerful report for, for different organizations. The options to, that each organization have depend on how you're collecting your data, which features you're using, um, and this time could be a good opportunity to kind of review that, maybe take off some questions, add more questions. Um, that's completely up to you, and, and we're here to help. Before I dive into the, the different headers of the report, I wanted to, to mention two things. First are these uh, shortcuts on the right, which from here you can also email participants, create new profiles, and update, um, for example, a postcode or a date of birth for more than one profile. So it's from one page and you can access it. Uh, so that might be helpful for, for some of you. Really important in terms of the people report is the reset button that you see here. When I run a people report, the system remembers that query. So next time that I go in, it will have the same set of filters that I've just used. So if you want to be on the safe side, always recommended to click reset before you start applying the different filters. Um, so that was just something I wanted to mention. Um, in terms of the headers, um, I'm going to go into a bit more detail in what each of them kind of covers. I'll start with the people one, which if you are collecting dates of birth, uh, you can then run a query to see all the people from a specific age range, for example. If you are collecting some of the upshot template fields like gender and disability, you can also run a report and ask to see all the male uh, attendees that I have on my system or show me all the, all the people with a disability or a specific disability from a specific ethnic background all these options are, are there for you. If you are collecting the postcode, uh, a UK valid postcode, you have a few more options. Um, one of them is to run a query by authority, by district, and so on. And we know that for some organizations, this is crucial for their, for their funding application. But what I wanted to highlight is this uh, bar here for LSOA IMD. Um, IMD stands for Index of Multiple Deprivation, and this is basically a, a data set used in the UK to classify deprivation. So in other words, if you're collecting the postcodes of your participants, you can also run the reports and see how many live in a more deprived area. So the lower, the more deprived uh, this is. Uh, and this is based on ONS data um, that we have a contract with, so it is updated on the system. Uh, so very powerful for, for some of the, the organizations. Below that, you can see a few uh, fields related to, to contact details, um, and this could help you easily identify all the people that you have their email address, all the ones that you're missing their emergency contact number, and this could help you 
kind of make sure the database is, is, um, is updated as much as possible. In terms of the rationale, the, the logic of how the people report works, um, I just wanted to give an example. So if I want to see all the um, male participants that are 15 or above, this works on an AND uh, logic. So it's all the male participants that are also 15 or above. But if I add another option from this uh, single choice field, it will change to all the males that are 15 or above or the females that are 15 or above. In other words, if I run this report for males uh, over 15, I get 131 matches. If I now add the female, because it's or, uh, I will get more matches now because there are more people that meet this criteria. So 153 in this case. Um, and I wanted to explain that uh, just so it will, it will make sense when you go ahead and, and run your, uh, your different reports. So that was the first one, people. And now we're going to talk about these three, um, which relate to attendance. So attendance in specific sessions. The first one um, allows you to filter the database by a specific project. So in this case, I want to uh, identify only the, the participants that attended the sport project, for example. I can then um, go into a bit more detail and say, I want to look only into the dance, so the people that attended the dance activity. You can also keep this one clear and run it across all, report, all activities. This is completely up to you. You can also see the activity group and activity types, which are ways to classify activities. Um, and they're used differently by, by each organization, but you can also filter by, by these two. Below that, you have the option to um, exclude some locations. So I can run a report and see only the people that attended an online session. Um, with COVID, you might be delivering quite a lot of online sessions. So this will exclude any other participant that attended, uh, participants that attended one of the other uh, locations. But in this case, I'm going to run it across all the locations. I then have the option to do a specific date range. So for example, using these shortcuts here, um, I can, say that I want to run a report from uh, beginning of April to today, for example. Below that, I have the attendance one, which um, this is where you can filter your participants by either if they attended a session or if they didn't. And one of the questions uh, we sometimes get from organizations is, how can you identify all the people that didn't attend a session? And this is where you can do it. So if I click no, I can get the list of all the 50 people that never attended a sports session. Um, and I might want to offer them other opportunities or, or get in touch, ask them why they're, they're not attending. So this gives you a lot of kind of insight um, in terms of your database of who's attending and who isn't. If I click yes, a few other options open up for me. Um, these give me uh, a bit in a bit more detail. I can make it a bit more specific. I can run the reports by a specific role. I can do a percentage. So show me all the people that attended um, 40 or more percent of my uh, sessions. And you can set different thresholds for hours attended, hours volunteered, number of sessions attended, a combination of these. So this could become very specific, but also very insightful when, when, you, run your, uh, when you run your different reports. The next section is about timeline events. Um, this feature has been covered in, in, our, uh, in one of our previous webinars, so I won't go into too much detail. But in short, this feature allows you to track different events that happened with your uh, attendees that are not necessarily related to attendance. So this could be um, different health checks. It could be 
referrals, it could be qualifications, and this is completely customizable. So each organization can, um, can define their own list and, and decide what they want to use this feature for. Um, but it has been very powerful for some. So in this case, I can run a report to see all the participants that have been referred to our organization, as an example. I can then be a bit more specific and choose an, an organization that they were referred from, a date that the referral has happened, and other associations such as project and activity and outcomes. The benefit of having this on the people report is that you can combine it with the other attendance and demographic detail to, to identify your users. The remaining two headers are about custom fields. So each Upshot account, as you guys know, has uh, their own registration form. Some also set up an online form. And this form consists of uh, a combination normally of Upshot template fields, but also um, custom fields that the organization wants to, to track. The people report allows you to report on both. So for example, if I want to find out how many of the profiles, uh, how many of the attendees are studying psychology, I can run a report uh, from here. How, what is the current employment status of our different participants? So if you're collecting this information and it's not collected as text, you will have the option to, to use the people report uh, for this. For some of you, your accounts are linked to a funder account. And in some cases, that funder can set custom fields that they would like you to track. Um, and if they do that, you still have the option to report on the fields that, uh, that they set for you. Um, and we, we are aware this is highly uh, important for, for some of the, the organizations. So these are the different headers. Um, I now want to show you um, two new additions that we've added to, uh, to the people report. The first one is under people and it's created between. So this filter um, enables you to see um, when the profiles were added to Upshot. So in this case, I might want to see how many profiles did we add in the last six months. Um, and then maybe look at their attendance. Did, did we start to engage with them? Yes, no, and start to look into why not. So this is one option for you to, uh, to run the report. And the second one, which I wanted to highlight is under attendance. So if I scroll down here, you can see the first attended the session. Um, and for some of the funders, this is really important because you can run a report and see that you've engaged with uh, 100 participants. Um, that's great. You can then query the, the database and ask how many of these attended their first session in 2020 because that for some funders is a different requirement. It's not just how many people you've engaged with, but it's more how many of them are new. Uh, and you can then look into how many of them are regular um, and, and some of the other stuff that I'll show you in the attendance report. So these two are, um, were re well received by a lot of the organizations and it's worth um, having a look at your end uh, if this is something you, you haven't kind of looked into in, in more detail. Um, I also wanted to mention these two because we've added uh, them as part of uh, as a, as a response to user feedback. So if you guys have more things you, you want to report on that seem uh, really helpful for, for you guys, under the support tab, you have the option to tell us your thoughts. Um, this is also in the bottom of the screen uh, and we really value this feedback um, and you're more than welcome to, to, share it, uh, to share it with us. So after the overview of the different headers, um, I now want to show you some examples. Um, one example of a report uh, like I previously did could be um, male participants. So that's under people. 
that attended my um, education and employment um, project, but only participants that attended in um, 2020. Okay, so once I am ready to run the report, I'm just clearing the previous filters. Once I'm ready to run the report, I can click go and I will get the number of matches. So in this case, 21, um, 21 matches. If I am going to run this report again and again, I have the option to save an individual reporting template. So in this case, mail, education, 2020. And what this means is next time I go into the people report, I can just choose one of my templates and it will apply the filter for me. So it could save you quite a lot of time when, when running these reports. Um, after I click go, I'm presented with a number of secondary options, um, which allow me to um, do a number of things. I'll start with download. If, if you click download, this will basically give you a CSV file of all the, the demographic detail. Um, this would be the demographic detail of all the participants that match this criteria. So you can see the names, gender, age, and it's worth highlighting all of this is fake data that, that we've added to the account, not, not live data. But if I scroll to the right, there are a few things um, I wanted to show you. One is the contact details. So if you need to, to export these, you can copy them um, from here. If I continue to scroll to the right, I can see um, the permissions. So do we have their permission to, um, to take pictures, to send them emails? You can track all of this from here. And you can also see which users added them to Upshot, when, when was the profile last updated, and when did they add their session? So could be very powerful um, in that sense. Sending an email and sending a survey, that's more from a communication perspective. You can send an email to all the, the education and employment participants and tell them that the session tomorrow is canceled, or if they need to bring something with them, you can send them a reminder. You can also send them a survey, maybe a feedback one, um, although I would recommend to do this from the, from the evidence folder, uh, from the survey folder on the top here. Um, and the last three, uh, they're related to privacy. So if you're looking to um, amend the access levels in the account or do the um, archive people that are not going to come back anymore, you have these options and you can complete them in bulk um, from here. Um, so that's basically it with the people report. Very powerful, loads of options that you can kind of uh, amend to, to meet what you need to report to your management teams, to your funders, to your trustees. Um, and yeah, it's all there for you to, to go and, and have a look. Um, we have seven minutes left and I feel like this is a great time to move to our uh, attendance report. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to show you how attendance is tracked on Upshot. So one option is from a register. On this register, um, you can add all the different people that attended the specific session. And you have a few other options. So for example, to track payments, to track volunteer time, to add different notes to their profile. So that's one option of tracking attendance. The other option is using the grid. Uh, the grid is, is a great time-saving tool because it allows you to manage the attendance across more than one session. So each column here is a different um, workshop session and I can easily manage the attendance from here and update it. If I want to go back to the register, I always have the option, but uh, I'm sure you guys will, fi will find which one uh, works better for, for yourselves in, in your organization. Um, and the reason I started with these two is because the attendance report is basically an export 
of these of the grid of this attendance. Um, it's an export of these with a number of other options that could be extremely valuable for, for you guys. As opposed to the people report, which is focused on a list of individuals that meet the criteria, the attendance report allows you to go into much more detail and kind of identify patterns of attendance, how many regular participants did you have, um, when did you stop engage with a specific attendee, uh, you can also report on headcount sessions that some of the organizations are using. So it has a number of, of different options um, as opposed to the, the people reports. You can run the report across one or more projects. Uh, again, in, for a specific activity or an activity group with locations as well, with dates, uh, but I'll go into that in a bit more uh, detail later. Once I click download, this report will come up. Um, I've highlighted a few cells in, in, in gray, uh, just for you to, to know. Each column here is a different session. You can see the date and the time. Um, if I scroll down, each row here is a different participant. And whenever it says participant, it means that Catherine attended this session uh, and that Mark attended the first session but, did, but didn't attend the second one. If I scroll to the right, it will also give me the summary of how many sessions overall did each participant attend. Uh, so you can filter by, show me all the ones that attended 10 or more sessions, for example. If I go uh, scroll a bit down, it will give me the overall attendance in each session. Um, and this could be helpful to understand which sessions are more uh, accessible uh, or more um, popular in terms of attendance. The number here shows me um, how many attendances overall I had, which could be part of your reports as well. Um, and because everything is on Excel, you can, uh, by using a number of basic formulas, um, calculate the average attendance in a session or what is the average attendances for each attendee. Um, really insightful data that it, it won't take you long to, to get to. Um, and, and the attendance report is, is great for that. The other option to report on attendance, on the attendance report, is the different columns that I showed you on the register. So th this is where you can export the notes, the rating, the payments, um, and I want to show you the volunteer time. Um, so the volunteer time will look a bit different. You can see as well, you have the choices that you've selected, you have the different sessions, you have the different participants, and zero in this case means that Catherine has attended but didn't volunteer, as opposed to Tony that attended and volunteered, or to James that didn't attend and therefore didn't volunteer as well. Um, again, if I scroll to the right, you would see a summary of um, minutes and hours per participant. If I scroll down here, it will give me the total volunteer time for each session. Maybe helpful with identifying uh, which sessions are uh, more attended by your volunteers. Um, and again, you can use average and you can use different features within this to, uh, to find more insight. Back to the attendance report, um, I wanted to mention that it also has the option to report on um, abandoned sessions and future sessions. So if you want to kind of try to forecast or look at COVID sessions, the attendance report uh, could, be, could be helpful to, to analyze it. Um, it also has the option to report on tags, which uh, some organizations started using as part of COVID. Um, and the tick box here is very powerful because if I then tick this tick box and go back to the attendance report, it will also copy all the demographic and personal information. So this might help with further analyzing um, your attendance. So is there a, a correlation between people with a disability and lower attendance or specific ethnic backgrounds and higher attendance? 
things that you just have on your account and you can easily, uh, you can easily export uh, and could be very powerful. Um, one last thing for me is uh, to mention that we are aware that this data is uh, exported in Excel um, and you might want to make it look a bit neater. Um, and exactly for that reason, we created a guide on how to turn Excel data to a bit more colorful and easy to read, if you like. Um, so we will share this guide with you um, later on um, for your benefits. Um, so that's the attendance report. Could look into regular participation and, and um, in a few more uh, a few more options that I presented. Um, but I'm just finishing off, and I wanted to say that these are only two reports out of the set of tools that you have on your account. So it might be the case that you'll use the other reports, which will be which will present in the next webinar, um, and not the attendance. Um, but we just wanted to present these powerful and popular tools uh, for you guys today. Um, and that's it for me. Uh, hope you found it useful.